a mustache too. Okay, so we just want to start off and ask just who you are and what on earth you're doing here. So my name's Adrian Belich. I'm here at uh, Westock. I'm giving a talk tomorrow on one of the panels about alternative distribution. But, um, you know, I mean, I continually learn. Documentaries is a process. It's not an end into itself. It's a journey. The first two panels this morning, one was about um, documentaries and advertising, which is very interesting about how documentary filmmakers are not being used in the advertising world. Um, and then the other one was I just got out of was about branding and all this reality television stuff. I mean, I make long-form, character-driven, more traditional documentaries, so all this ad and branding stuff is something very new to me, but you know, I see it everywhere, so it was fascinating. I mean, you know, some of the major players in the business are here, so you get to hear from them, and then you get to meet them. And, you know, and it's interesting also just the audience, because most people in the audience are general documentary filmmakers or aspiring, so we all have a similar look at stuff. It's the new, brave new world of ads and documentaries. What are you most excited about this year um, in terms of innovation and new things happening in the documentary world? Well, I'm, I'm hoping some money comes to docs. You know, I mean, that, that's an innovation I've been waiting for for a long time. Uh, and that's why I was interested in the two discussions this morning, the panels about these kind of fusions, people trying to figure out different ways to make documentaries sort of get out to the broader audience and also I think marketers and general public realize how cool documentaries are, that they have a certain gravitas, they have a certain sort of, for lack of a better word, reality to them that fiction doesn't. And so the audience, the general public, will pay more attention to something if it's a true story. I think clearly from the panels this morning, no one knows where it's going to go. But I think I'm old school, so I think it's all about story. If you don't have a good story, if you don't have interesting characters, if you don't tell it in a compelling and, and entertaining way, all this is just crap. You know, no one's going to watch some show because Gillette sponsors it. You know, no one's going to watch some commercial because it's some cool truck. They're going to want to watch it because it's something interesting. It's something that touches them. All the way back to the basics. If you don't have a good story, you don't have anything. And I think that that's one thing I hope the documentary filmmakers realize here is not to sell themselves out. You know, how can I get forward attached to my stuff? But how I can continue making a good story but find creative ways to actually make a living out of it. What are you doing right now that, that goes in line with that? Well, I, I'm here because I, I'm not doing anything really in terms of aligning myself with making docs and making money. Um, I sort of do it the old-fashioned way. I'm, I'm a freelance artist, so you know, I work on other people's projects, make money, and then I go do my own, sort of the old-school way that creative people used to work who wanted to work on their passion projects and not sort of sell out. But I think there's some interesting hybrid ways that you can go about it where you can work in a creative environment because I think a lot of ad people, a lot of television people, realize after a lot of mistakes of making trying to make documentaries but leading with advertisers rather than with story it doesn't work that way creative people the visionaries the geniuses the storytellers the directors they're really the ones who have to lead it not the producers it's clear that no one really knows where it's all going uh which to some people is very scary but to people like me who i believe in in my talents i believe in my storytelling it's a very exciting time because people don't know what you can't do and so if you're creative and you're forward thinking and you're engaging, I think that there's great opportunities for creative people to try and set a path for this new world of sort of advertising and documentaries. And then I don't know, I mean, this afternoon comes a whole new set of, of panels that's going to blow my mind and challenge my thoughts. And, you know, and then tomorrow's a whole other set. So it's been great. I mean, well, we've been here four hours. It's been awesome. Is this the artist, your mustache? Oh. Is that your signature? Oh, the, the whole mustache thing. The mustache thing. thing. Uh, this is marketing. Marketing. I actually had the hair down to my hips. Okay. Until six months ago. And um, it's, it's marketing. I mean, it was just a funny thing. Just, I used to have a beard and then I shaved it off and left this. Mm. And I went to the Sundance Film Festival four years ago to help some friends market their film. Mm. And I was walking around with a crazy hat and this coat from Uzbekistan and the mustache and long hair. And everywhere I walked around Park City, Utah, people just come up to me and go, hi, what's your opinion on films? And can't take a photo with you? And would you come to my party? And I was thinking, you know, my film, Beyond the Call, is going to be coming out in eight months or so. We have no one backing it. We have no, like, marketing. We have nothing. So come on, whiskers. And four years later, I still look like it. And now I'm pretty much known as, like, well, like I saw someone here that I saw in Bangkok, Thailand at a film festival. He instantly recognized me. I, I, I couldn't recognize him. Average white guy. But he's like, oh, yeah, the mustache. So this is marketing. It's just for fun. Uh, again, it's not what you do. It's how you do it. Like, I smile. I'm like, oh, my guy looks so weird.
You know, it's like, yeah, mustache. <laughs>